I never imagined that the day would come when I would have to defend the home I grew up in from someone I once loved. My husband Ben, who had always been by my side, had slowly become someone I barely recognized. I am Katie Manning, and this is the story of how I reclaimed my life after being betrayed by the one person I thought I could trust. When my mother passed away during my high school years, my father took on the role of both parents, showering me with endless love and support. Our bond was unbreakable. So when my father's health started to decline, I suggested to Ben that we move into my childhood home to be with him. Ben seemed to embrace the idea, and I felt relieved, believing that we could all live together harmoniously. Are you sure you're okay with this? I asked Ben, a hint of worry in my voice. I can manage on my own if you'd rather not. He smiled reassuringly. Katie, it's not just okay. It's the right thing to do. We'll be there for your dad. My father, always considerate of my feelings, hesitated at first. I don't want to be a burden to you too, he said with a concerned look. But after some convincing, he agreed, and we moved in together. I thought it was the beginning of a new chapter where we could support one another as a family. The first few weeks were wonderful. Ben and I unpacked our things, settling into the house with ease. My father, ever the gracious host, prepared coffee for us after we finished setting up. We sat together, enjoying the warmth of the moment, with me feeling optimistic about our future. But soon, things started to change. One evening, as we were unpacking, Ben casually suggested something that caught me off guard. You know, Katie, maybe you should quit your job. You could stay home and take care of your dad full time. I was stunned. Quit my job? Why would I do that? Well, he began, since we're saving on rent now, there's less financial pressure. And this way, you can focus on what really matters, your dad. His words seemed thoughtful, even considerate, but something didn't sit right with me. The idea of becoming financially dependent on Ben made me uneasy, but I pushed the thought aside, grateful for his support in our new living arrangement. As time passed, the dynamic in our household shifted. My father, despite his declining health, took on more and more of the household chores. He prepared meals, cleaned, and tried to make things easier for us. But instead of relieving my burden, it only increased my guilt. I considered Ben's suggestion more seriously, and after much deliberation, I decided to quit my job to focus on my father. That's when things took a darker turn. Ben's behavior changed. He started coming home later, his cheerful demeanor fading into something colder, more distant. When my father was around, Ben would put on a facade of kindness, but when we were alone, he became aloof, even irritated. I couldn't shake the feeling that he resented my decision to stop working, though he was the one who suggested it. The nights grew lonelier. Ben often claimed he was on business trips, but something about his sudden disappearances didn't add up. One evening, after my father had gone to bed, I received a terse email from Ben. He wouldn't be coming home that night, he said. No explanation, no details. On a business trip, was all he wrote. As the weeks went by, his absences became more frequent, and I started to wonder if there was more to his trips than he was letting on. My suspicions grew when I received an unexpected message from my mother-in-law demanding the address of Ben's workplace. Her tone was accusatory, laced with disdain. You've made Ben take care of your father while you sit at home doing nothing, she snapped when I called to ask what was going on. Now he's returned to our house. You've driven him away with your selfishness. Her words cut deep. I had always known that Ben's family didn't like me, but I never expected them to go this far. The revelation that Ben had been staying at his parents' house instead of working was a punch to the gut. I felt betrayed, confused, and heartbroken. When Ben finally returned, it wasn't with an apology or an explanation. Instead, he came with luggage, his parents' luggage. Isn't it a bit harsh for a husband returning home? He sneered when I asked what he was doing. Oh, by the way, my parents are moving in too. This house is mine now. I stared at him, speechless. His arrogance was staggering. This is my father's house, I replied, my voice shaking with anger. It's never going to be yours. Ben laughed, dismissing my words as if they were insignificant. I've got news for you, Katie. I've been planning this for a while, pushing you to quit your job, making you dependent on me. It was all part of the plan. Once your father's gone, 
This house will be mine. My heart raced, the full weight of his betrayal crashing down on me. This man, the person I had shared my life with, Swing had been scheming to take away everything I held dear, but as I looked at him, something inside me shifted. I wasn't going to let him get away with this. You might want to rethink your plan, Ben, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. This house isn't going to be yours. In fact, you're not even my husband anymore. His smirk faltered. What are you talking about? Your mother sent me a completed divorce form, which I happily submitted the day after my father went to the hospital. So, legally, we're done. The color drained from his face as he realized the gravity of what I had just said. He frantically called his mother, only to find out that it was true. The smug confidence he had exuded moments ago was replaced with panic. You can't do this, he shouted, but his words fell flat. I already did, I replied calmly. And just so you know, this house was left to me by my father. You have no claim to it. Now, I suggest you and your parents pack up and leave before I call the police. Ben tried to argue, but the reality of his situation was undeniable. He had no leverage, no power over me anymore. He left that day, taking his parents and their belongings with him. As the door closed behind them, I felt a sense of relief wash over me, like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The days that followed were peaceful, but Ben wasn't done. He started sending me messages, long, poetic declarations of love, pleading for a second chance. But his words meant nothing to me now. They were hollow, desperate attempts to regain control, and I wasn't about to fall for them. One day, he even showed up at my door, claiming he had nowhere else to go. His parents had sold their house, expecting to move in with us, and now they were homeless. I didn't care. His problems were no longer mine. When Ben refused to leave, I called the police. As they escorted him away, I knew it was the last time I would see him. He was out of my life for good. In the weeks that followed, I rebuilt my life, finding a new job and reconnecting with old friends. One of those friends was Scott, a childhood neighbor who had moved back to the area. His support during those difficult days was invaluable, and our friendship quickly blossomed into something more. For the first time in a long time, I felt truly happy. Scott brought joy back into my life, helping me move on from the pain of the past. And as I stood in the home that had once been the center of so much turmoil, I realized that I was finally free. Free from Ben's manipulation, free from his family's toxicity, and free to start anew. The love and strength my father had given me had seen me through the darkest times, and now I was ready to embrace the future. As I looked out the window, watching the sun set over the place I had always called home, I smiled. This house, filled with memories, was mine. Not just in the legal sense, but in every way that mattered. It was where I had grown up, where I had loved and lost, and where I had found myself again. And as I turned to Scott, who was waiting for me with that familiar, reassuring smile, I knew that the best was yet to come.